By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have such an interesting old school magic battle for you. We're going to look at a Titania song deck that actually only has one Titania song in it. And that deck is going to take on a classic mono green stompy deck, completely black border, just a beautiful deck. Now this match was played at Dead Bot Con, the old school magic tournament held in Utrecht about a month ago and it was really a great uh, a great event that was held by David so thank you David for that and if you want to know more about the ins and outs of this tournament for example the rule set that was played here we're playing Swedish rules by the way with an open reprint policy but if you're not sure what that actually means please check the description below because there you can find more information about the rules and about the tournament itself and what you can also find in the description below are several timestamps one of those timestamps reads MTG Games, and if you click on there, you're gonna go straight to the game. So you're gonna skip the deck deck and skip this introduction if that is what you want. You can also go to specific parts of the video, for example, look at the deck deck of Kundert first, if that is what you want, right? So you can use the timestamps to kind of navigate through this video however you want to. So you're completely in control. Now that has all been shared with you. It is time to start with the deck deck section of this video. I'm gonna start with the deck of Kundert. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Kunert. So I've called it Wrath of Titania. And the reason that uh, I've called it that is because of the three Wrath of Gods and the one Titania's song. Now, when you look at this deck, you probably notice that there are no creatures in here. We do have some Mistress Factories though, but when you don't animate them, they're just lands, right? So Wrath of God is just great in this deck. Two white and two, wipes the board clean, buries all creatures, and then it's like, it's always going to be a one-sided Wrath of God, right? Because Kundert doesn't have any creatures, so it's gonna be absolutely fine. He does have Mistress Factories, but if he doesn't animate them, it's all good. He also has the beautiful Jade Statues, a full playset. Um, so this is just an artifact for four mana, but when you pay two during combat, it turns into a three, six creature, and you can attack with it, you can block with it, you can do all that stuff, but you know, of course, when you're gonna cast your Wrath, you're not gonna animate it, you're gonna wait until after Wrath of God is resolved, then the path is clear and you can start attacking. So that is of course one way for Kundert to kind of win a game. He's got some direct damage in here as well. He's got Fireball, he's got three Lightning Bolts. So that's a perfect way to win the game. But I think what Kundert wants to do is kind of use his Titania Song as a finisher. So when his opponent is already quite low and he's got his big artifacts on the board, like Jam Daytona and Ice Manipulator, he wants to cast Titania Song and then that will turn all his non-artifact creatures into creatures with power and toughness equal to their casting cost and then he can attack his opponent and kind of kill his opponent with one swing. I think that is really the idea here. He doesn't want to play Titania's song early, and that is also why there's just one song in the whole deck. It is just this thing that all of a sudden he can just get his song, his opponent probably doesn't see it coming, and then he wins the game. I mean, if, if we look at the deck, it's primarily brown and white, actually. There, there are not that many red cards, not many that many green cards in here, but the red and green cards in this deck, of course, can play a vital role in giving the victory to Kunert. I mean, if you kind of think away of the red and the green part of this deck, it's just really a good control deck, right? We see four IC Manipulators, we see four Swords, we see three Wrath of Gods. So that is kind of enough to make sure that your creatures of your opponent are not gonna get through, right? And then on top of that, you've got the red chunk, which gives you the direct damage to throw to the face of your opponent, but also to kind of, you know, kill that first turn hippie um, with the Lightning Bolt right? So it's got a lot of control elements and that's of course perfect for a Titania Song deck because then you can simply wait until you're going to draw into your Titania Song, play it out at the right time, win the game. I just think this is a really interesting deck. Um, you know, I love the fact that he went for, for three colors, that he added that red for direct damage. Um, and, and yeah, I think it's good. I mean, a, another decision could have been to say, you know what, I'm going to take out my green cards and I'm going to put some more creatures in it with this control build like Sarah Angels. But to be honest, I find this much more interesting and I'm looking forward to see this deck in action. So this is the deck of Kunert. Now let's take a look at the deck of his opponent. Green Stompy, that is the deck that Tim is playing today. And actually it's a deck that he's playing always. This is an outdated deck picture, by the way. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of his current deck. Maybe there are a few choices, uh, changes. For example, I think Gazban Ogre, perhaps has been swapped for another card, but we'll just have to wait and see when we see Tim's deck in action. When I'm looking at the main 60, you know, this is really your traditional aggro green strategy, right? You just want to get your 1-1s out early, your script sprites, your Lanor Elves, 
Um, then you also have your whirling dervish's mane, which I find really cool because, you know, when you get them out early enough and your opponent just doesn't have all the defenses up, you know, that whirling dervish can grow very, very quickly. I also like the four ice storms in this deck because they can kind of give you the tempo advantage. Turn one Lanowar, turn two ice storm, and then from there just start spewing out creature after creature after creature. Just put the pressure on. That's what this deck wants to do. And your opponent can just die very, very quickly. This deck is super explosive. We also see the Giant Groves. Remember, he is playing against a deck with Lightning Bolts. Giant Grove is kind of a great counterspell against Lightning Bolts, right? So you can have a scenario here where he, for example, attacks with his Whirling Dervish. In response, Kunert is going to cast a Lightning Bolt because he doesn't want the Whirling to grow to a 2-2 or 3-3, whatever the size is at that moment. In response, uh, Tim can cast a Giant Grove, saving the Dervish and dealing actually more damage to Kunert, you know, to the opponent. So that would kind of be the nightmare for Kunert, and that would be the perfect scenario for Tim. So there are like these little options here. I also like the inclusion of the Suchi. Suchi is a great card because it doesn't die to the Abyss. And Abyss, of course, would be a card that's always going to come in from the sideboard, or maybe it's being played main by a lot of players. Suchi kind of works around that. Now, we're not going to see uh, any of those shenanigans today. We are going to see, of course, a lot of Swords to Plowsiers and Lightning Bolts and Wrath of Gods coming from the side of Kunert. So I think it's up to Tim to try to get the pressure on as early as he can, try to maybe, you know, control the mana flow of Kunert with those ice storms and, and just try to get as much damage in as early and quickly as he can. The interesting thing here is the sideboard of Tim. I think it's quite good against Kunert's deck because we see four uh, scavenger folks and we see four crumbles. So it's very anti-artifact. And we know that Kunert is playing tons and tons of artifacts. So all that anti-artifact stuff can come in after game number one. I actually think that that will, um, you know, strengthen the chances of Tim uh, winning a couple of games. I think Kundert is a slight favorite because he just has so much creature removal in his deck. But I mean, who knows if Kundert can go out fast enough, can, you know, hit the right lands with the Ice Storm. And of course, after sideboarding, he's having a lot of answers to the artifacts. He can, he can definitely win this match. But for me, Kundert is a slight favorite. Let me know in the comments below who you think uh, is the favorite in this particular matchup. And uh, I guess that means we're now ready to go to the action. We've looked at the deck of Tim. We've looked at the deck of Kundert. So let's go to the match. Game number one. Here we go. Kundert is sitting on the left with his Titania song deck. And there we see the opening hand. Two swords, a sylvan, a disenchant. On the right, we see the hand of Tim who's playing green stompy. I did see an Urnum there as one of the cards went quite quickly. There we see a Zavanna cast by Kundert and a pass. So now it's really Tim's, you know, moment to shine, right? Turn one, you want to have a one drop. There it is. Okay, a Soul Ring. That means that next turn he can play his Urnum and he can start bashing in on the life total of Kundert. And there's a tap perhaps for, ooh, a Sylvan Library. That is really good for Kundert. This is what he wants to do. Let's see what Tim can do. I'm expecting a forest and an enemy here. And then it's very likely to see a swords coming from uh, from Kundert the next turn. So there we see tapping four. There is the Urnum and a pass. So, so far so good for Tim. But the problem here is, of course, the Sylvan and all those cards in hand for Kundert still. Remember, he's playing four swords to plowshares. And I believe three Wrath of God. So just a lot of creature removal. And then I'm not even talking about the Lightning Bolt. He's taking an extra card. He's dropping to 16. Kind of indicating that he probably has a Swords to answer that Urnum. There we go. There's a Basic Planes. And a pass. I'm really seeing a Swords here. And I'm wondering if uh, Tim is going to be brave enough to also animate the Mistress Factory. Obviously that also depends on what he has in hand. Perhaps he wants to cast even more creatures. So Tim a little bit in the tank here, trying to think what is the best uh, thing to do. You know the risk. If you animate the factory, perhaps he has a disenchant and a swords in hand. He can play both of those. Tapping the soaring, animating the factory to a 2-2. Two -two. Tapping a green with one still in. And probably going to cast something like a Pixies. Yeah, there we see an Argovian Pixies. And attacking with the 2-2 two, two, and the 4-5. There we probably see a disenchant here on the factory. That's step number one. Are we going to see step number two? There is step number two. Sorts to plowshares on that Urnum. 
And uh, I still think it's a good call by Tim. I mean, you know this is what he's going to do, but at least uh, he's got rid of a Swords and of a Disenchant. And you just have to do what you got to do. And there we see another creature. There's the uh, the Flyer, the 1-1 one -one Flyer, the Script Sprites on the side of Tim. Now obviously the problem here is that Kunert is playing with Wrath of God, so if he can now find a Wrath, it's going to be a two for one for him. And I believe the hand of Tim is almost empty. And as soon as his hand is empty, then Kunert really has all the freedom to do what he wants to do. And he can take control of the game. So it's just really, really difficult in this matchup for Tim to win it. Are we going to see a Wrath of God? No, we're not. We're going to see a Basalt Monolith a lot of glare on that, unfortunately, an artifact for three that you can tap for three mana and then you have to pay three to untap it again. So it's kind of like a way to store some mana. There's an attack here, dealing four points of damage at least. Another green source and he's going to commit a little bit more to the board. There's the Whirling Dervish. And I think if you're Kunich, you really want to find the Wrath of God now. If he cannot find it, he's going to take 5 points of damage next turn and he's going to drop to 7. And of course the Whirling Dervish is going to get a counter, will be turned into a 2-2 creature. And he's taking 1. Playing out a Mishra's Factory, so that's a potential blocker and passing turn here. So no Wrath of God. Remember, Wrath of God is a sorcery and I assume if Kundert would find it, he would just cast it now. So there's the attack. That's, that's the thing with Green Stompy. Turn him sideways. Remember, uh, Tim has that uh, Pendlehaven. So there we see a Swords on the 2-1, Argovian Pixies. And the attack here. So is he just going to take the other two points of damage? And then are we going to see a Giant Grove, for example? There we're going to see the pumps. He's going to make it a 2-3. He's going to take three points and he's going to drop to nine, I believe. Hmm, perhaps I'm missing something because he's on 11. Oh, of course, when he changed the um, the life total of the dice earlier, I understand. So this is correct, actually. He, he is on 11. And the Whirling Dervish gets, of course, the counter. It's now a 2-2. And I think if you're Kunert, you're not too worried because this is all part of the game. You want to stabilize. Now he's still on 11. You know you play against green, so you don't have to worry about direct damage. Uh, that Mishra's Factory all the way on the left there. There's the Wrath of God! That is, of course, very painful, but it was something that was coming. And interesting for Tim now, now that he knows, okay, my opponent is playing with Wrath of God. That's an interesting thing for him to know. And there we also see the attack with the Mistress Factory. Tim is now on 24. And look at it. There we see a Scavenger Folk. So this is one of the differences when I talked about um, during the deck deck that I had an outdated deck photo of, uh, of Tim's deck. So probably he plays Scavenger Folk main and he's taken the Gasman Ogres out. That's what I uh, suspect. And of course the uh, Scavenger Folk can be really good in this matchup. So it's a 1-1 one -one from the dark and you can pay one green and tap and sack it to destroy target artifact. There's the attack, the 2-2. Two -two. He can block it and use the Pendlehaven. The question is, is he going to do that? Because there's probably a trick up the sleeve of uh, of Kunit here and so Tim decides to just take the damage he's on 24 still anyway so he's gonna drop here to 22 and now he's gonna untap draw for turn the downside of Scavenger Folk is that you've got to tap it to sack it. That's always been like kind of a, a nuisance to me. There we see a Swords in response there. So two more life for Tim, but it doesn't really matter. And the thing, the reason why I don't like it um, is you see what, what uh, Tim is doing here. When you play Scavenger Folk over Crumble, you probably play aggro, right? So you want to attack with your Scavenger Folks. But the problem is once they're tapped, you cannot use their ability straight away. So it, it makes it even slower than it already is. You just want to be able to destroy an artifact on site. At least Tim has that other scavenger folk to kind of keep a little bit of pressure on Kundert. I mean, he is on 11. So that's something. There we see, I think, another Mishra's Factory. It's kind of hard to tell, but that means he could pump it to a 3-3. Three, three. He's going to attack right now. I'm expecting Tim just to take the damage. I mean, he's, he's on 22 anyway, so he's going to 
Go to 20, and is he gonna pump it? Looks like he's not. Perhaps it's another lander on the left. It's hard to see. There's the attack, so I guess it's not a factory. Anyway, the 1-1 one, one is gonna attack again. He can pump it to 2, so he can deal 2 points of damage, dropping Kunert's life total to 9. That's exactly what's gonna happen here. Or are we gonna see a bolt or perhaps another swords? He's played two swords so far and one Wrath of God, meaning he's got two swords to plowshares left and two Wrath of Gods left in the deck and of course three lightning bolts, so he still has a lot of removal. And what I like about Timir is that he's able to put a lot of pressure on the life total, or a lot but at least some pressure. And you know, that means that it's going to be really difficult for Kunert to fully take advantage of the Sylvan, right? Because he doesn't want to pay the four life. Here we're going to see a pretty big play. We're going to see the Basalt Monolith being tapped, I guess for the Jade statue. And he's also going to animate his other factory. So that was a factory. Going to attack for four here. Tim's going to drop to 16. And the Jade statue is a problem. Remember, um, Kundert can animate the Jade statue for two, making it into a 3 6 blocker. There we see a Mishra's factory. Of course, he can also use the Scavenger Folk to blow up the Jade Statue, that could also be an option. I guess if you're Tim, exactly, you're just gonna pass turn now. And again, Kunert can look at the top three cards, already knows those top two cards, so only card number three is new here. And you kind of see him, seeing him put that card on top as well. Two cards in hand for Kunert. And I believe Tim is just top decking. It's hard to tell though, because we cannot see his hand. Playing out another land. It looks like he's gonna animate the Jade statue. Or is he just animating the factories? Yeah, he's animating Jade statue and a factory and attacking, so he's not animating both factories. And he's doing that, of course, so that he can still pump his other factory if Tim wants to block with his new Mishra's factory. Kind of what I'm expecting here is uh, on the end step, or maybe now already, Tim using the scavenger folk to blow up the statue. On the other hand, if he does so, that means that next turn he cannot deal any damage, right? Because next turn he can probably attack with the factory, and then if Kunert wants to use his untapped factory to block, in response he can use the scavenger folk to blow it up. So perhaps the best strategy here is just to take the damage and, uh, and just drop those five points. I do believe I see two cards there in hand for Tim, so that's two more cards than I expected him to have, so that's actually good news. Perhaps, of course, Tim also has a giant growth in hand, that would change the situation. Look at that, he's blocking the factory, and then he's probably gonna sack it, meaning he takes no damage. Interesting decision, perhaps that means that he has a, uh, oh, he's making it a 2-3, then he's making it a 3-3, then he's gonna tap and sack and destroy the Jade, yep. Yep, yep. So that means he takes no damage and the factory of Kundert is tapped. Very well played here by Tim. It means he can at least swing in for two and he can put Kundert on seven. And perhaps he's got a giant growth then he can put him on two. You know, this is pretty big. Animating. Only one card in hand for Kundert. Attacking for two. Oh, disenchant. That is unfortunate. Tim just needs a little bit of luck here. And there's going to be a pass and now we're going to see an attack for four probably. And then Tim is going to drop to 12. Again, looking at the top cards. I think if you're Kunert, you're probably thinking, I have to... Um, ooh, there's a new Jade statue. That's unfortunate for Tim. You're going to have to keep in mind that perhaps uh, Tim is playing with uh, uh, with the Hurricane, for example. So you got to make sure you don't get too low. There is a Script Sprites. That is something, and it has flying, so it's pretty hard to block. The problem here is for Tim that also his life total is getting pretty low. He's on 12. And it's interesting to see how much pressure Kunert can still put on the life total of Tim, despite the fact that he's not really playing with any creatures, right? He just has the full playset of Jade statues and the full playset of factories. But, you know, by using those Wrath of Gods in the right way, and of course cards like Icy Manipulator, he doesn't need a lot of creatures. And he's going to swing in again. Attacking here for seven points in total. There we see the block and the pump probably. Oh, and he's saying, I'm actually not animating the factories. What I've done is I've animated the Jade statue instead. Oh, now I understand. Jade statue being a 2-3. So he's just taking the damage. going to drop to 9. 
And I mean, Tim just needs another 1-1. One, one. That would be perfect, because he can use his Pendle Havens to potentially block the factories. And then he can attack with his other. Although there's that Icy, so probably upon attacking, exactly, he's now going to tap it with the Icy. The way this works, right, is you say, I want to go into combat. Do you want to respond? And then you see that Icy activation. Tapping four. There is a Suchi. That is actually pretty good. It is something to block the attackers of, uh, of Kundert with. Gonna look at the top three cards here again. I mean, that Icy is just a pain. If he can get rid of the Icy, he can deal some damage through the air. Both players are nine, by the way. Quite an interesting game thus far. I mean, Kundert can now decide, of course, to tap the Suchi and deal seven points of damage, putting uh, Tim on two. It looks like he's going to tap four. I wonder why. Perhaps to animate both factories and the Jade Statue. And he's animating the Jade Statue and one factory. Remember, he's got two factories untapped, so he can make that one factory into a 4-4. Four -four. So Kundert is playing this very, very patiently. I think if you're Tim, yeah, exactly. You're probably going to block the Jade, right? And then he's probably just going to take two points of damage, going to drop to seven. And this way, Kundert can still block the factory if Tim decides to, uh, the Suchi, if Tim decides to uh, attack with it. Because remember, the factory can also pump itself, so he can block, pump 3-3, three, three, and then uh, use the other factory to make it into a 4-4, four, four, and he can trade a Suchi for a factory, which is a really good trade for, for Kundert. So Tim's on 7, so for the first time in the game, he's lower than Kundert. Looking at his hand, probably. I believe he's got two cards in hand now still. Really in the tank. So he's going to attack, so in response, of course, Tim um, Kunert's going to block one of the creatures, probably the Scrib Sprites, then he's going to animate the factory. So that's now a 2-2, that's going to block the Suchi. He's going to make, give it 3-3, three, three, tapping the other one, and it's going to tap itself, turning it into a 4-4, four, four, so this is the scenario I talked about earlier. Are we going to see a Giant Grove here? And if so, what is he going to play the Giant Grove on? Well, on the Suchi, of course, because he tapped the Scrib Sprites. So here we're going to see the Giant Grove, 7-7, seven, seven, taking care at least of one of the threats. But remember, Tim is only on 7. It's very risky what he's doing. Remember, Kunert is playing three Lightning Bolts and a Fireball, but they do get Tim's point of view. He's got to play towards his outs. Kunert looking at the cards now. Another Mistress Factory. Oh, so many factories here. And I think Tim is going to be so happy to board in all those crumbles after game number one. Yeah, that's it. So he's saying, you know, you've won it because he could attack with the two factories and the Jade Statue. That would be six damage. And with that one Mishra's factory that he played, he could pump one of the factories and, the, and that way deal seven points of damage exactly. And that means the end of Tim here in game number one. So one game up for Kunert. Both players are going to dive into their sideboards and we'll catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go, and at least Tim is now on the play, which will make a huge difference for him. He wants just to cast a lot of creatures really quickly and start hurting his opponent. And uh, his opponent is Kundert, who's now on the draw. So he's looking at his opening hand. Are both players going to keep? That is the first question here for game number two. And look at that. It looks like Kundert took a mulligan, so one card goes on the bottom. So he's starting with six. There we see a script Sprites by Tim, who's passing turn. So that's a pretty good opening for uh, for Tim. Perhaps he can find a Pendlehaven next, deal some more damage there. We see a Factory and a Mox Pearl and another Mox here, Mox Emerald and a pass. There we see another green and an attack for one. And there is an Argovian Pixies. That's actually pretty good against that Mishra's Factory. Remember, Argovian Pixies doesn't take any damage dealt by artifacts and it also cannot be blocked by artifacts. There we see an icy manipulator here, turn number two because of all those moxen. It does mean that he's open now for three points of damage, probably gonna drop here to 19. 
Sorry, to 16. He's on 19, going to drop to 16. Are we going to see a Whirling Dervish? No, we're going to see an, another Argovian Pixies. Perhaps he's taken out the Whirling Dervishes. And perhaps he's put Crumbles in. Remember, he's got four Crumbles in the sideboard, I believe. So he could have four Argovian uh, Pixies, four Scavenger Folks, and four Crumbles. That's very anti-artifact. And he's going to attack here. And he's going to tap one of the Argovian Pixies. So this is the thing with the Argovian Pixies. They don't have protection from artifacts, so you can still tap them down. It's just that all the damage dealt by artifact, artifacts is reduced to zero instead. But this is looking really, really good for Tim. Look at the pressure he's able to put on the board. Another Suchi. And if you're Kundert here, you really need a Wrath of God. A Wrath of God would solve all of his problems and would get him completely back into the game. If he doesn't have a Wrath, he's looking at nine points of damage next turn. Okay, there's at least another uh, Icy Manipulator. So now he can tap down the Suchi and the Argovian Pixies. That means he's only going to take three points of damage and then he'll drop to 10, which is not as bad, of course, as taking, uh, as taking nine points. That's a huge difference. So those Icy Manipulators can kind of stall the game until he can find a Wrath of God. So here now he's going to activate both of his Icy's. He's going to tap one of the Argovian Pixies and, of course, the Suchi is going to take three, going to drop to ten. No Giant Groves here from Tim, not yet at least. He's probably going to wait until the last moment. Four, does he have, for example, Urnum to play out here? That would be really good. What would even be better for Tim is just to play out more small creatures. You really want to go wide here because of those two Icy, so there is an Urnum. The 4-5 powerhouse from Arabian Nights. Kunder drawing into another card. He really needs that Wrath of God. There's a strip mine, I believe, and a pass turn. Drawing card for turn. It's looking really, really good here for Tim. Attacking with everything he has. So we're going to see a tap down of the two Icy's. Probably taking care of the Urnum and the Suchi. He can also animate his Mistress Factory, though he cannot use it to block anything. Oh, look at that! Oh, ho, ho, double swords! Tapping down the two Argovian Pixies, destroying the two big creatures, and only taking one point of damage from the Script Sprites. Wow, it looks like Kundert is kind of back into this. There's still pressure on, but I mean, it's looking much, much better for him. Can Tim do something on his second main? Yes, he can. There's a Whirling Dervish. And there's a Lana Elves. At least that's something. Of course, the big problem here is that both of those creatures died to the Mistress Factory. Are we going to see a Wrath of God here? No, we're going to see a Jade Statue instead. And now it's getting difficult here for Tim. Is he still going to be able to kind of get through because we've got a factory we've got the jade statue we've got the two ICs. it's just getting harder and harder for tim to find an opening here if he can find a crumble to at least take care of one of the ICs, already the situation would change because he's got n2 argovian pixies that cannot be blocked by the factory or the jade statue and he's got the scripts rights Tim being in the tank here, he knows that he was winning. But now that uh, Kundert has stabilized, it's going to be really tough for him. Has to find a way here. I think a card that could be an interesting addition into uh, Tim's deck, and maybe Tim you've tried this already because you've been playing green forever, is If Biff Afrit. Yes, it can kill your own Pixies, but it is a flyer with that build-in hurricane mechanic that you can use to kind of get those last points of damage through to your opponent. Two cards in hand there for Tim, it seems. I wonder how many cards Kundert still have. I think zero. Remember, he took the mulligan. And I think this is a pass turn here, an end step. He's going to use the IC to tap down two of their Govian Pixies. 
Or perhaps Tim is saying, I want to go into combat. Do you have a response? And in response, he's stepping down the Pixies. That's the case. Attacking for three. He's going to go with everything he has here. Remember, Kunder doesn't have the mana to animate the Jade statue. So he's just going to take three points of damage here. And there will be a counter, I believe, on the Whirling Dervish. So it's going to be a 2-2 unless I've missed something. But Kundert's now on 6. This is quite an interesting game. Only one card in hand for Kundert. He's playing it out. It is a Plains and a pass turn. But now Kundert has enough mana to and tap down two creatures and animate the Jade Statue and animate the Factory. So it is a completely different story. I do believe the Whirling Dervish here should be a 2-2 unless I'm missing something. So there's the tap of the two Argovian Pixies. There's the attack again. Gonna animate the Jade Statue to a 3-6. Gonna animate the Factory to a 2-2. And are we gonna see some Giant Groves? So these are the, are the blocks. Are we gonna see double Giant Grove on the Script Sprites for the victory? Oh, we're going to see a crumble. And that means that the uh, Whirling Dervish is going to die here because of the Jade Statue block. But he did tap another green, right? Are we going to see a Giant Grove on the Scripps Rites to put him to two? Or does he want to keep his Whirling Dervish alive? That is the question. Either way, it's looking really, really difficult for Kundert. I would probably put it on the sprites. And he's going to take the damage. He's going to drop to four. And a pass turn. There's the untap. So Tim can now just attack, I guess, with the script sprites, dealing one more point of damage. He's just going to attack with everything, though, or not. Taking it back, it seems. And he's asking Kunder, do you want to do something before combat? He's going to, of course, tap down the two Argovian pixies. He's going to animate the Jade statue. Exactly. And then there will just be... Ooh, he's not. He's actually not tapping down the Argovian Pixies. Interesting. So he can now attack with the Argovian Pixies. Tim really in the tank here, trying to figure out what to do. If he has a giant growth in hand, this game is over. I don't think he does. What is he going to do here? That is the big question. Really in the tank. He's so close. If he wins, it would make it a 1-1. We're going to go to game number three. Two cards, three cards in hand, it seems. Attacking here with the Argovian Pixies. There's a Swords on the Pixies. So he's going to go two lives up, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, there are more bodies which is really important here for Timmy. He wants to keep the pressure on. Of course, the nightmare for Timmy would be a Wrath of God by Kundert. Uh-oh. No, it's five. That's not a Wrath, right? Uh-oh, it's four. Oh, Wrath of God! <laughs> oh, what a horrible card. But you kind of know it's coming. There are three in the decks of Kundert. He, has play he hasn't played a single one. So complete annihilation here. And uh, to make matters worse, if Kundert wants to, he still has two mana open to animate the statue and attack for two. 
We do see a crumble here on the Jade statue, but that means six life points here, or four life points. Sorry, it's only casting cost of four. Uh, four extra life for Kundert, who's gonna go to eight. And this is gonna be really difficult for Tim to bounce back from. And those two forests are tapped because of the icy manipulators of Kundert. And can Tim now rebuild? That is the question here. And Tim just passing turns. Both players kind of in top decking mode here, trying to refill their hand. Ooh, and the Sylvan is gonna be so sweet. At least he's on eight. That's good news for Tim, so it's not really easy for him to activate and use those Sylvans. Playing out a Lanawer and pass turn. So Kundrud able to look at the first three cards. Try to fish up anything that's kind of good. Remember, the deck of Kundrud is kind of slow. And what I'm hoping for is that he can show us the Titania song. I mean, right now wouldn't be the best time to cast it. We see another Jade statue. There's a lot of glare on the cards, but it is a Jade statue. And the card next to it is an Icy Manipulator. He's got two Icy's. There we see a Pendlehaven. So he's going to tap down the Lana Elf. There's a pass turn. He's going to look at the top three cards again. And there again, uh, there's the animate of the Jade and the attack. So three points of damage here for, uh, for Tim. Who's going to drop to 23. Still has lots of life. That's not the problem here in this matchup. Wants to attack, tapping it down, of course. And a pass turn. And I think Tim now also knows that it's going to be really, really difficult for him to still win this. He has some options, of course. This is the second game, so he's probably boarded in a lot of artifact hate. That can definitely help him on his way. Tapping four here. Animating the Jade. Attacking with the Jade statue. So Tim's gonna drop to 21 playing a scavenger folk. So that's actually pretty decent. Attacking again, gonna tap it down again with the icy. And also playing a bolt on the scavenger folk, I assume. Saving it here with a giant growth. This is something we talked about in the deck decks, right? You can use that giant growth to kind of counter a bolt. And this was a nice demonstration of that. It looks like Kundert's a little bit in the tank, thinking, do I want to do something with my Icy on end step? Looks like he doesn't. He is forgetting to untap the Jade, though, but, you know, he can do that later. That's so good. Untap, upkeep, draw. Exactly. And now he's going to draw his card for turn. There's another Wrath of God. Yeah. That's just... The Wrath of Gods are so good in this deck because they're constantly giving Kundert card advantage, right? It's a two for one. It's a three for one. I mean... It's so devastating against Tim, because Tim is really, he has to commit to the board in order to win. So it's really tough. It reminds me a little bit of when I played with a Thala deck, and whenever, you know, uh, um, Earthquake came, it was just over for me. It was just so tough to play against that. At least there is one little script sprites on the side of Tim. And he's gonna tap down a little sprite. He's probably gonna swing in with the Jade, gonna deal three more points of damage. He's gonna drop further down. Kinda of hard to see his life total. It looks like it's on 14. There is an attack here. Tapping down the sprites. There we see an Urnum. I mean, Tim is trying. This is what he has to do, right? This is the strategy of his deck, but he just needs to at least find another Crumble to take care of one of those two Icy's so that at least he can push some damage through. And I mean, you know, Kundert has already played out two of his Wrath of Gods. He only has one more in his deck. So now Tim is going to draw for turn. 
Let's see if he can find even more creatures. Two cards in hand there. He's going to attack. Of course, they're going to be both going to be tapped by the Ices. And that means three more damage coming in from the Jade Statue, probably during combat. There's a Mishra's Factory animating, attacking for three. It is really nice, by the way. So he's on 11 now. It's really nice, by the way, to see Jade Statue doing so much work. I mean, you just don't see that card often in uh, in Swedish tournaments or other old school formats. I think in Alpha, Beta and Alpha, you do see it a lot. It's quite a good card in those formats, but in like Swedish, you don't see it a lot. And it's really nice to see it being played with Wrath of God, kind of, it's almost like they were made for each other, right? Jade Statue and Wrath of God, it's such, it has such a good synergy. There we see an attack now for five. So, and look at the life total of Tim, now he's on six. And he was, he was winning most of the time. Remember, before that Wrath of God of Kundert, Kundert was on four and was almost dead. Oh, this is, this is very salty for Tim. And this is the thing with these aggro decks, especially an aggro deck like green or blue, where it's kind of hard to have direct damage as a finisher, especially for green, because in blue, at least you still have Psy Blast. There's a balance! Oh, killing the creatures. This is not even necessary, I feel. I mean, it's kind of to be super safe. And it looks like both players have the same amount of lands. Oh no, Tim had to put a land away. So there's an attack. He's now on one. There's a bolt! End of the game! Look at that! He had two giant groves in hand. Oh man. This must be so frustrating for Timmy. He was so, so close, but at the same time, it's just great to see the deck of Kundert. And here you can see that Kundert doesn't even need his Titania song, right? He doesn't need it. There's enough control in his main 60. Congratulations, Kundert. Thank you for showing your deck on the channel. And also thank you, Tim, for showing your beautiful green list on the channel as well. It would be great to hear what changes you've made from that deck photo that I showed earlier uh, in this video. And um, yeah, thank you to both players and also thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share and comment on this video. All these three things are completely free and it really help Timmy Talks move forward. And if you're new to the channel, welcome to Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. Okay, all that really helps. And before you go, I would just like to ask you to consider becoming a patron of Timmy Talks. Here you can see the Timmy Talks Patreon page and there's probably an info card appearing right now. If you click on that info card, that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can join the Timmy Talks crew. And the cool thing is when you join, first off, you're supporting me and you're supporting my channel. You're helping it to keep it alive, to keep it running. But also when you become a patron, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and you can join all the Timmy Talks events. So it's actually, yeah, it's just pretty cool. And last but not least, your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Let's take a look at our fantastic, amazing, wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Somebody can see.